Good morning. Uh, welcome to Nalu um, in our office, which is pretty nice. Um, so today we're going to be doing uh, some conservation questions, which have been sent in um, all the way from England, um, from Fairs Platt uh, Junior School with Mrs. Goldsmith's um, After School Club. So I'm Nick. This is Kim. We're two of the interns here, and we'll get right into it. So our first question is from Scarlett, and she just wants to know what's the cutest thing that has happened to you on this project, Kim. The cutest thing I've seen here has definitely been the hatchlings. Uh, it was pretty nice to get to see some hatchlings come up out of the sand of their nest and make their way out to the ocean. What about you, Nick? Yeah, it's quite an easy one. The hatchlings, when they come out, is pretty awesome to see because you don't expect to see them um, in the morning, but if you do, it's, a, it's very, very nice to get that opportunity to see them. And you get lots, take lots of nice photos, which if you look in the Facebook page, you'll be able to see all our photos of the hatchlings we see, which is pretty cool. Um, so the next question, Sid, um, is talking about the Turtle Tracker app, which is brand new this year, which is where we've been satellite tracking the turtles. And Sid wants to know what's your favorite name that the turtles have been given? I think the coolest name is Gunwardu. It's the Aboriginal word for Carnarvon, uh, which is the closest town here to Narlu. Which one is your favorite? Um, I'm quite partial to Constance Winifred. Um, she just sounds like a, like a nice old British lady. So it feels quite nice. But Marlu, you've got to mention Marlu. Um, she's one of the turtles that she's basically, she's like 300k off the coast of Australia, just out in the abyss, just over like a 2,000 meter water. Like who knows where she's going to go? Like she may go up to Indonesia or up to the Kagos. So she's probably my, my favorite, but my favorite name has got to be Constance. The next question is from Erin and she would like to know how many hours do you spend viewing the turtles? It's a good question. Um, well, it depends what we're doing. So on a night survey, which um, we do at the beginning of the season, we'll go out about eight o'clock at night and um, until four o'clock in the morning. That's usually what happens. But the minute we see a turtle, we stay with it so we can see what's going on. And um, so it, each turtle is like completely unique. So some turtles could come up, get it done and be, at, be back in the water within an hour. But it's up to we've like you know me and you we both worked on other projects and luckily here these turtles are pretty good but i've sat with a turtle for four and a half five hours before is that something similar for you yep they don't always get their nests on the first try so it can take a while but yeah and then on morning survey so that's kind of what we do every single day that takes about two and a half hours three hours on the beach and that's where we're going out looking for the tracks that they've led the night before um so the first one of um eliza's questions which she sent in three. So she wants to know what, how long have we been working for the company currently? We've been here since October, but every season there's a different intern team and they're here for six months. So we've been pretty lucky to be here at Narlu. Yeah, yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> so Eliza's next question is, when did you get interested in researching animals? Um, so I went, when I went to university, um, I studied marine uh, zoology. Um, so it's kind of just, been since I was at college probably when I started really looking towards like the natural world um, for where I want to kind of carry on my education and it's just always that thing of wanting to find out what's happening it's kind of there's there's so many unknowns still out there that it's kind of why you go into trying to look, do this research which and we've been lucky enough to be here like the first year ever doing this research and they sat tagging so it's like it's brand new same for you or when was how long have you wanted to research animals. um basically my whole life i just didn't didn't know that i would end up working with sea turtles but yeah there's a lot we still don't know about sea turtle life histories and so to kind of be out there collecting the data and studying them is a pretty cool experience yeah again the third and final question is what's the most interesting place you've been that's a difficult question um we both have gotten to work lots of places around the world doing this kind of stuff um but I would say probably the most interesting place I've been has been Costa Rica. Yeah? What about Costa Rica would you say is most interesting? The jungles, it's a lot of like varied landscape. Just like Narlu, it's pretty remote. Um, but, but yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. You get to practice speaking your Spanish? Yes, I'm pro at Spanish. Um, my most interesting place, um, here has been an amazing experience. Um, learn a lot about remote living and just kind of being off the beaten track. So this this has been really, really interesting. But I say the most interesting place I've ever been was potentially Belize, which is um, when I was back at college. 
that was kind of one of the first trips that really made me look at marine life in a different way and that's how I kind of went on to do it at university. Okay, so Ella, she's got a great question. Um, so why are the females that are tracking on the app? We've got some going north, some going south. Why do they do that? We actually don't really know yet, but each turtle is an individual and so they have their own feeding ground. So we don't know where these turtles came from. So the whole point of tracking them is to see exactly where they are going. So some of them are going to feeding grounds south of here, some of them are going up north. Actually, one of our turtles, Pulsey, has traveled over 1,800 kilometers north, so she's up at the Kimberly Coast, which is pretty cool. We don't know if she's going to hang out there, if she's going to keep going farther. But yeah, male turtles are a lot harder to catch, so most of the research on sea turtles in general is done on females. Yeah, I can answer. All right, our next question is from Daisy, and she wants to know, what is your favorite, an adult or a baby turtle? That's hard, I don't know if I can pick. Um, they're both such different creatures. So the babies, obviously they're so small and they're so cute and they're just pretty awesome to be with. But then you just like the size of adults, it's like you have to see it in the flesh to like believe how big they are. And just, it's just the conversion from this to then a meter and a half long, like they're so impressive. So I think I'd say my favorite would be an adult. Like they've come through so much and they're making it back here every year. I do like the hatchlings, but I'd have to agree about the adults and the migrations. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, especially, like I say, with Pulsey going so far north, they, they just travel so far that, and yeah, it's just still so unknown, like, how they find them away from being so small to that particular area, and just, yeah, like I say, they're so different. It's pretty cool. So I know you've already answered this um, slightly, uh, but Ella wants to know, why are we only tracking females? I know you've touched on it slightly, but... Can you expand a bit? So sea turtles spend their entire life at sea except for the females when they come up to nest. And so like I said before, males are harder to catch. So it's easy once the females come onto the beach and she's finished laying her nest to kind of stop her and take some data on her or attach a satellite tag to her. Um, so that's why we've been doing that here. We would love to be able to uh, tag some males because they're going to be doing completely different things. Um, but like I say, it's just that it's so hard to find them and then so even if you had a boat out here potentially you could only find the females in a certain area and the males in a different area it's just there's just so little known about the males of sea turtles that it's always one of these things back to like the research that males need to be researched more just because there's so much on females that males are kind of pushed to one size as such yeah yes yeah, so that's the our nine questions that we've done for conservation questions episode one um so if anyone else sees this video and wants to send us some questions you can come visit our office again and we'll answer the questions as well as we can um <laughs> yeah thank you very much for joining us um yeah and have a good day thanks guys